uh, Executive Secretary Mijaldia, Secretary Doresa, and the members of the Cabinet, Chairman Irene Santiago, and the GPH Implementing Panel members, Chairman al Haj Murad Ibrahim, and our brothers from MILF, Chairman Iqbal, and the MILF Implementing Panel members, Chairman Muslimin Sema and the Yemeni Central Committee members, my fellow workers in government, my countrymen. I am a, a creature of Mindanao. Though when I ask from where I come, I would always say that uh, I am a Cebuano because we trace our lineage from our paternal others. But uh, actually, I have not resided in Cebu, not even for the day. And so I've always considered myself from Mindanao, who has grown up in the place and saw everything that unfolded all these years. And one of those things, really, is the continuous strife, the internecine between our brothers, the Moro and the Christians ever since. I ran for president, and obviously this will be the first time that you would realize it, that while they were campaigning all along, I never really, uh, well, in the sense that I did not uh, away uh, directly involve myself uh, with the campaign, and because I said I was not running. Problem is, uh, as the campaign developed, I was appalled by the fact that nobody was talking about Mindanao. Every one of them the usual infrastructure project and blah, 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 blah. But never one of them, not, not one of them, ever said that we would take a second look to what will happen in Mindanao. And being there was uh, an eyewitness to the so many body bags being carried out of Davao and those in the places where they were fighting for their lands. And I said that this would be a tragedy. Because if from here, if there's nobody who take the cudgels for Mindanao, then the fighting will continue. And I said, if there is no person who would stand for peace in Mindanao, then we'll have another round of 40 almost 45 years of fighting. So we were faced with the dilemma of fighting for another 45 years, added or let alone to the problem of the Communist Party of the Philippines with whom are we, are we were or are fighting for almost 45 years now. There seems to be no respite to the troubles that ailed the country. And so I decided to run on the platform that there will be a structure that must be acceptable to the people of the Republic of the Philippines. And one that must be adapted willingly by the Moro people of Mindanao. Ang problema dito, ako lang ang nasasabi noon. At sinasabi ko na uli, pabalik-balik yun, here and now, again, I will tell you that without an altogether new framework and the best structure that would be acceptable to all, 
would be a federal setup. And I said that if you can perfect the federal uh, government apparatus by about thir the, tri the third, fourth year, and there would be a president, a strong president provided for that kind of government, I will willingly give up the rest of my term. I will resign and I give you my word now. Kung madali ang lansan na to at kung mapadali natin, there will be no problem sa akin because it provides for a strong president and since I'm elected for four years. But if you can just finish it in three to four years, I am out. That I commit to you. So mandalian lang natin to. We can have a special uh, autonomous within the federal government for the Muslim in Mindanao. But the historical injustice, I said, that's what I, uh, I term the, uh, the thing, the situation now, must be corrected. And it dates back to the time of Magellan. Well, he was comfortable uh, capturing the islands of uh, the Visayas and Luzon, but uh, in Mindanao, they tried to do it, but they were not able to complete the process because Mindanao at that time was already 100% Islam. Doon ang nakaproblema. And because they were not only trying to inject a new system of colonial rule, but also a religion. That complicated the matters and that led into a bloody war for 400 years of resistance by the Moro people. And when the Americans, by the terms of uh, the Treaty of Paris, the Philippines was included as one of those conceded territories by the Americans. How it came about that Mindanao was included, that is really a mystery to all of us. But that started another round of trouble. And I said, pardon me for saying it, it's not really intended to just, and there's so many atrocities that accompany the campaign. So that when I showed to everybody the photographs of those uh, taken during the time and showed the pile of bodies of men, women, and children in a pit, in several pits in Mindanao, I would usually be answered by saying, Mayor, matagal na yan. That's 100 years. And I told them, that, you know, this picture is a portrayal of the problem until now. It is not 100 years old. It is today. Unless you're able to do something about this photograph, this photo. And mind you, it was not taken by the Filipinos at the time because nobody had that gadget called camera. Sa kanila yun eh. The only problem is they took pictures of it and piled it in the archives of their country. And so some enterprising Filipino got a copy of it. And so that's how we have these uh, pictures of uh, almost uh, the brutality and cruelty of men. And mind you, the irony of it all, that it is the very country that's really trying to come up with this uh, very late real realization of what the human right is. So that when uh, this came, came to, to Irokos, I 
I said that uh, you should be the last to say those words. And for as long as uh, we do not have a, a, a mechanism to ensure that justice has been served, we will never find peace in Mindanao. In the same manner with the communists, we must be able to address them. Otherwise, no president ever after me will be able also to solve it on time. Maybe over time. But uh, I said what is very important is uh, to educate the people. And that is why I am very much interested in the education of the Moro people. And you know, mind you, when I entered the mayorship, there was only one madrasa school. And today it has expanded to almost 169 because I wanted the Moro people educated so that they would know what to do with their country in the coming years. So my only desire is that uh, peace in Mindanao would finally come. And if it can be done peacefully, without a fight, we would be grateful to God. But not a single drop of blood has been shed in this a new undertaking of uh, giving a country uh, finally the deliverance from violence. Ako, hindi ko nga malaman. I, I, you know very well, kayong mga, half of my line of grandchildren are Muslims and half are Christians. So I would be the last person really to deny hindi natin kailangan. Because I would still also be in a quandary if it indeed it happens and say, where is my loyalty? San ako niya niyo ilagay? And so if there's any one person actually who was really very much interested about peace, at the start and even the campaign, it was my battle cry. Mindanao, and of course, uh, corruption and uh, the drug and the issues of criminality. But whenever uh, I went around to, I always said that uh, we have to have peace in Mindanao. And I was the only one talking about it because the rest of the guys, with due respect, never knew any single issue about Mindanao. Either they did not know about it or just pretended not to talk about it. Uh, maybe to well, fear to alienate the others or not also frank enough to admit that there is a problem which we have to solve. And I hope it will be solved. From the time that I have signed that document, I will see to it. I will talk to the speaker and to the Senate uh, president and leaders to fast track it because I want it. If I could get a peace uh, agreement with the communist, and I am hammer out something for the MNMI and to all the Moro uh, groupings and even the Abu Sayyaf. If I could just extend my hand to them in friendship and just tell them that it is time to just really have a country which is normal and peaceful and for our children to grow in peace, then I would have succeeded. Well, if, if I could just have this thing about territory, I'm ready. If you want to call an action as early as three years from now, I said I am willingly going to, to step down. And I hope to complete the process of 
destroying the apparatus. The drug problem in the country is not run by one person. As a matter of fact, the exchange stocks. Wherever there is a dirt of one supply, then they send another. So the exchange uh, goods, and this is really an apparatus which the government must destroy, else it will this, uh, be the reason for the failed state of the Philippine Republic. If you see now, Lamo, totoo lang magprangkahan tayo. We are already in the narco politics stage. Just like in South America, started as just a small time, and you, you should know the history. There are a lot of books written about how America failed its people. And in the border along Mexico and Arizona, Texas, and uh, the countries bordering it, there are now about 60,000 people who have died there. And uh, nobody's complaining. Here, I have a problem of uh, drugs, which is really they're supplied by many, either up from out, thrown overboard, jettisoned, and, you know, uh, somebody picking it up in the high seas or manufactured it. I would not like to dwell on the one million under my term, which started just a few months ago. I will limit myself to the already confirmed figure given by General Santiago of PDEA, you know, heading that agency. Ang lumabas ganito, there are about three million at that time. I do not know where to add the one million that's coming my way to solve or to just leave it there as a separate figure because kukwentahin lang ho ninyo sa 200 per hit that is the prevalent price dito sa I think all over the Philippines it's 200 if you times that by 3 million yung kay Santiago lang muna you will have about uh, 6,000 per month, per person. And if you multiply it by weeks, then you will have 18 billion a week. 18 billion a month, rather. And if you count it by years, that would be 216 billion a year. Money that is intended for food, money intended for the school of the children, money intended for medicine. A breadwinner in the family would lose that much. And not all of it are really honestly earned, for some of them were stolen from the other hands of those who are robbed, killed along the way. So the highest of uh, time. Kailangan talaga maputol ito, not only the individuals, but the apparatus itself. And mind you, again, I did not order the police to take punitive actions. I directed the police and the armed forces to go after them because I have declared war. And whatever the human rights guys would tell us, whatever be the characterization of the situation, I am declaring a war. And until 
the last pusher or the last drug lord is killed, this campaign will continue until the very last day of my term, however short or however long it is. I am committed to that duty. I am, do not pay, uh, maybe pulling a chair here and say that I am the only one who can do it. But in my time, because I am here, I will do it. And I do not care. You know, I would like to announce now that the 16, 200, uh, 2,026,000 of M16 that, uh, that was maybe ordered or were ordered already, I am ordering its cancellation to police. And uh, we will just have to look for another uh, source that is cheaper and maybe as durable and as good as those made from the place we are ordering them. We will not insist on buying expensive arms from. We can always get them somewhere else. So, kalimutan na nila sabi it would be arriving on July, uh, July of uh, uh, 2017. I am ordering the police to cancel it. Di natin kailangan ano. And you know why? Ayan yung bakit? Why should we hurry it? Yung baril na yan, bilihin ko. Sino patayin ko niyan? Wala man tayong kalaban. Tayo tayo lang papatayan dito. So what's my hurry? Why don't have to hurry? I buy bullets? What for? For the Filipinos. Eh, tatatayo tayo lang dito. I will just cancel it. Contributed to the success of the Reinvigorated uh, Bangsamoro Transition Committee. Wag na muna tayo itang bilhin ng baril. Let us just have a moratorium of violence and maybe we can use the money useful for some other endeavors. Yan lang hinihingi ko sa inyo. Kasi magbili ako, gagamitin lang rin yan para magpatayan tayo dito. So, what do we get? Because we buy that, we have to buy bullets. And if you have the bullets, you know, para patayin mo lang Pilip, kapwa mo Pilipino. Or kapwa mo Moro. Or kapwa mo Christian. So ako, I am committed to the peace process. I pray to Allah that it will succeed in my term. Sabi ko nga, baski yan na lang ang magawa ko para sa bayan, okay na ako. Then I can retire in peace. Maraming salamat po.